Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here this Thursday night, live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake. Also, we're live in St. Paul, which is new within the last three weeks, and we're glad to have you St. Paul viewers watching. And if you have a comment or question, there's the phone number down there, 651-747-3838. Uh, call in with your comments or question. We'd be glad to have your input. Uh, if you don't like, you know, talking on the show, that's fine too. We have an email address there, speechlessmn at gmail.com. You can email me with your comments and questions and ideas for the show, uh, whatever you want to say. And uh, if I don't like what you want to say, I can delete it too. So, no, I just, you know, uh, we'd love to have your input, uh, positive, negative, whatever, uh, even constructive. Uh, be glad to have it. Now, um, shows changed from what I advertised last time. Last time I said the representative, for, former Representative Dan Severson, who's running for Secretary of State uh, inside the Republican Party, was going to be on the show. He had to cancel out, and uh, I got in a better guest. Ah, no, nah, no, nah, better's not the way, right word to use. <laughs> you know, it just seemed fitting to me that we have, uh, this is Resurrection Weekend, uh, we celebrate the, not only the death and the resurrection of Christ, um, but there's actually a new political policy party out, and that party is called the Resurrection Party. It's not a political party per se. I may be saying that wrong. Um, so anyway, the Resurrection Party on the Resurrection Weekend, I thought it would be very fascinating. good friend of mine will talk about it uh, in a little bit. Uh, so, first of all, there's just a couple issues I have to go over. Um, legislation, legislature is out of session for about a week here for the ho holidays. And so there's no legislation that has passed. <laughs> so I don't have a whole lot to say. Uh, but a couple big issues that have been going on in the legislature, I just got a couple points to make. And I'm going to be referencing this book, My Heritage. Of course, it has the Constitution in it. And we're going to be talking about this book and an, an another book in a, little bit of, in a little while. But it's important to have your Constitution with you and on you because of if you don't know your Constitution, you could be trampled by it. And we've had many people on our show who have been trampled by people who don't know the Constitution and don't follow it in our government. But just one thing about this law that's trying to take away our right to vote for judges. And a lot of our legislature does not read the Constitution, have not read it, or haven't read it in a long time, and or they've skimmed it, don't really know it. And what's amazing when you read it to them, all of a sudden, oh boy, we better reconsider what we're doing. Or some of them will say, I don't care, file a lawsuit, see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, who cares? But in, your, in this effort, legislative effort, to take away your right to vote for judges, the U.S. Constitution has some very dire warnings for those that try, for those states that actually do take away your right to vote for a judge. And it's the 14th Amendment, Section 2. And it says, and I'm going to just cut to the pieces that deal with this, uh, representatives shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers. But when the right to vote at any election for the choice of judicial officers of a state, The basis of representation therein shall be reduced in the proportion which the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of male citizens 21 years of age in such state. What that is saying is that if the state of Minnesota passes this constitutional amendment to take away your right to vote for judge, for choice of judge, okay, the word key word there is choice of judge, if you take away that right, we lose our representation in the House of Representatives. It, we don't have it anymore. 
but there's a large element of the DFL party and a small group in the Republican Party that want to take away your right to vote for judge. 14th Amendment said, if you do that, you lose your representation in the House of Representatives. That's a big deal. That's something you should keep in your mind as this battle's going on. That should be enough by the 14th Amendment to stop that constitutional amendment. Okay, the other bill that's going through that passed, signed by the governor, is the anti-bullying bill. The key thing I want you to know about this anti-bullying bill, if you have a church that is in the schools, okay, that is renting school rooms to have their church or doing worship services, if you have kids that go to that church, that also go to that school, if there's a school activity that's going on at the time the church is going on, it's very likely if your church is against homosexuality and gay marriage that your church will be, cannot be, participate in that, cannot use those facilities, will have to move someplace outside the, uh, um, the public school. So it's a big issue that each church needs to look at that is in the, that rents high schools or rents junior highs for their service or community centers. You know, so you gotta you gotta watch on, out on that. I'm just throwing it out there. You need to know that uh, my church. I've asked them to get me their rental agreements because they're in Burnsville High School. Uh, we have a number of campuses across the, 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 the city here, but they are specifically in Burnsville High School. We want to see their lease or rental agreement and going to give it to legal counsel so that they'll look at it and, and see, hey, here's, here's your risk. You may have to move out, so you better start making plans. So if you haven't considered this concept of the anti-bullying bill it will affect your church, it very, very well could. So just be on the alert for that. All right, as I told you, uh, Representative Dan Severson, uh, former representative, uh, also ran for U.S. Uh, um, senator and is now running for uh, Minnesota Secretary of State. He was supposed to be on the show this week, and he is now uh, can't, couldn't make the show, so he's coming on next week. So I want you to you know, be aware of next week. And, uh, of course, Dan is a uh, former Air Force pilot and uh, did a wonderful job serving the country. Is an outstanding individual. I'm just fully behind him. He run for Secretary of State, very knowledgeable person, knows the issues going on inside the uh, Secretary of State's office. And so you're going to want to watch him next week. But since he couldn't make it, you know what I decided to do? I said, let's get a Marine on the show. <laughs> a, a Marine that has uh, started uh, another party called the Resurrection Party. And we're going to talk about that in a couple other books. And, uh, but thank you, Mike Terry, for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank good you, Timothy. Good to see you. Now, I mean, we gotta, just got to tell where we've met. Uh, and I don't know exactly when we first met. But right now, we go to a Bible study Wednesday morning yes, we at Joe Sensors in Roseville, mm -hmm. which uh, if you want to come and join us, uh, guys, it's a guy's Bible study. Come on in and Wednesday mornings at uh, 7, 7 o'clock. Yeah, there is oxygen out at that time. There is oxygen. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, but, we met, but we met earlier. I, I can't remember. I, I, I remember it vividly. Okay. Um, we were at a, um, a Bible study over in the White Bear Lake. Uh, I can't remember the name of the church at the time. Oh, uh, in Maplewood. In Maplewood. I mean. Yes. Yes, that's where we met. Right. And uh, former mayor, Bob Cardinal, city council member. Absolutely. Uh, was at that Bible study. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and I, was a, uh, I was there, and I'm a minister, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I met you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Tim um, was very strong in his belief systems about what was wrong you know, with the legislative and the judicial. Me? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, back then, and and uh, <laughs> and he's a strong personality, uh, you know, an A type, and, and, as am I. And uh, I really didn't like you uh, oh. at, at first uh, because you I've, know, I've never heard that before. But I mean, but for all the wrong reasons, you know, which was kind of interesting. 
Oh, wow. uh, because you're a Christian man and I'm a Christian man. Uh -huh. uh, but you were talking about issues that I was studiously avoiding, uh, mm. which uh, has to do with what's going on in our, in our city, in our state, and our government, because I was kind of leaning to that side where I was so heavenly minded, I wasn't mm -hmm. very earthly good. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I was irritated that you were, you were bringing me back to reality all the time, mm. and, and I wanted to get back over to, you know, to the, lap, you know, the happy water uh -huh. area. You know, and uh, so that's where, how I first met you. And okay. then uh, as we have been going to the Bible study, and of course I've gotten to know you, right. and, um, and to know you is to love you. you know. <laughs> pe people say this, it really do, they say this about guys yes. like you and me, is yeah. that we are acquired tastes. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That, that, that's so true, though. <laughs> but now, uh, now that I understand uh, what what your mission was uh, is, mm -hmm. and uh, and I've had my eyes open to a lot of things which we can talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm fully on board with you. I just think you're, you know, I really do. I think you're a good man, a, a solid man of God, and I'm I'm glad to have you as a friend. Well, and likewise, and I I actually saw. A change in you that took place, not not as far as your faith goes, mm -hmm. but as far as just a, a, a Christian engaging their community, mm -hmm. which you did. You you've always engaged your committee, but the the political realm, or the so-called political realm, was kind of eh, you know leave that alone. There's too much to to deal with and other things, which you know there is. There's a lot to deal with. And what happened with that, Timmy? Uh, very candid with you. Um, I was on this leaning towards the heavenly minded, no earthly good thing. Right. And with the last presidential election, um, I was crestfallen um, because, you know, I, I saw the, you know, what, what they were voting for and what they were, who stood for what. And, and I, I said, well, where was the Christians in all of this? Right. And um, it's a good question. And I worked, uh, and I worked in the inner city churches for three churches uh, uh, where I was, uh, you know, a little bit of salt and a whole bunch of pepper. And um, a, a lovely man of God that I, I had the opportunity to work with. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, entire congregations were voting um, a Democrat because he was a, a man of color. Mm -hmm. and, well, one of the reasons. The other sure. reason, of course, is, you know, welfare economics and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, and I, you know, I took issue with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I was going out uh, and meeting uh, other men, and, and they were all with their lip hanging out. and. And, and, and pouting and, and feeling bad and, sure. you know, cursing the darkness. Right, yeah. yeah and okay. there, 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 there a whole the bunch of that going on, and um, I was upset about that, and I really was in prayer about it, and, and the Lord says, well, you're upset? And he said, resurrection party. Uh, mm -hmm. And well, that's a startling two words, you know, and, and immediately, you know, this is the way I talk to the Lord. I say, uh, needs explanation, <laughs> you know. Right, right, <laughs> like, yeah. Need more data two here. Two words with what context? And he gave me nothing, <laughs> you know, and for, for weeks and weeks and weeks, he gave me nothing. And then, because um, I was really, you know, like I said, I was still on that heavenly minded, not so earthly good, but now I'm, my, I'm not at rest anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been stirred up a little bit with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then he gave me a word, uh, he gave me the word occupy. Mm -hmm. And just gave me that word, and I went, sure. you know, and mm -hmm. I just, that was it, you know. And then finally I was prompted to start doing some due diligence. Mm -hmm. And um, very clearly it says in the Word of God that, you know, we are to to occupy where, until he comes. And, um, and Jesus said, you know, during my day, um, you know, Rome had all the authority by fiat, you know, it was all already decided. There was nothing to argue about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we as, as, as Jews did not have any say mm -hmm. in what Rome was going to do, mm -hmm. none, you know. All they would do if they didn't like right. us, they crushed us. We, there's nothing we could say. Right. And so, um, you know, when people say that I was not political, I, I'm, I'm a kingdom. I'm, I'm the kingdom guy. I'm right. building my kingdom sure. here in, in, a, in a heathen world. Right. Uh, well, when, we, when this country was started, we were given a vote. Mm-hmm. And um, as Christian men and, and non-Christian men, we were given yeah, a vote. Everybody was given everybody a vote. Everybody was given a vote. And uh, that meant that we were supposed to participate. And Occupy, to me, now was expanded to, um, I have a family, I've got children. Um, um, I'm to protect them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm to be a servant right. of them and watch over them and, and give them safe harbor, you know, so that they can, uh, they can grow you know, in Christ and in, in, in their faith and, and, and have a peaceful environment, you know, to pursue the things the Lord wants them to pursue. And all of a sudden this whole thing took on a different message altogether. And uh, I was convicted. I was busted. I was guilty. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that's when you probably noticed a change. Well, I did notice a change because, I mean, it was literally, you know, because you would, you would push back if I would say something politically related or mm -hmm. well, we got other things to do. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I remember coming, we go out to eat after the Bible study, and then all of a sudden you said something that contradicted everything you said before mm -hmm. <laughs> on these issues. And I just, I was, I just, I heard it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't ask any clarifying questions or take it in. But over mm -hmm. the process, you know, I did. Mm -hmm. Over time, I did, and and you had changed your point of view. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, you know, and and all, you know, when you really get down to it, you know, people ask me the question I get asked all the time: um, Is this a political party? I said it transcends politics. Um, the the truth of the matter is the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. um, we have got to speak. The truth mm -hmm. and, and and we're supposed to be tellers of the truth mm -hmm. and um, we're silent mm -hmm. um, I'm 67 years old and uh, my generation my watch um, has failed dismally um, what what I'm providing to my my children and my grandchildren uh, on my watch is a is a country way down the road to destruction from what I, I was given as yeah, a child. Right. And um, I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. Now, well, you, you mentioned two words in there. One, this issue of protect. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's when I'm not hearing from the pastors. It, I mean, they say, hey, your responsibility as a man is to pro provide and protect, mm -hmm. but that protection doesn't take you into the realm that makes a real difference where you vote mm -hmm. where you can get your rights taken away your money taken from you where you got to support things that you don't that are against your religion and and but don't engage that just stay with us let's huddle up here mm -hmm. and protect in our little society but let's not go out there and engage it so in in effect we're really not protecting no we're violating uh, the the very charter that the lord give us has given us we're we're violating the very charter that was given to us by our founding fathers mm -hmm. we're violating it all by not protecting it's it's we've given up um, our um, our uh, responsibility right and and yet we demand our rights yes but we don't want to have the responsibility and uh, that's what i see going on and when i like i say i'm a life coach i disciple men that's one of the, the great challenges I have with men. Um, mm -hmm. They've been raised in an environment where they don't have to be men. R exactly. So they're not. Well, why, why would you if you don't have to? Right. I mean, they, they, they have been emasculated, you know, <laughs> over large. And, I'm, I'm, and this is an indictment uh, <laughs> about, um, I mean, in general, uh -huh. about the American male, Christian and non-Christian, have been emasculated. And... Um, the reason for that is, is they don't want the responsibility. They don't. They don't. A man uh, uh, of my dad's generation, uh, mm -hmm. coming out of the depression mm -hmm. and the war, um, he had to provide for his family. Right. It was his responsibility. And whether that took uh, eight hours a day or eighteen hours a day, whether it took five days a week or seven mm -hmm. days a week, whatever it took, he had to provide for his family. That was his responsibility. And uh, now. Um, that's not the case anymore. Well, so this emasculation is not only happening from the church leaders. You can only be a man inside the church here, outside, it's a different story. Uh, but then also it's ha happening from the women oh. or, and the wives. Well, um, I was on a show out in, uh, out in uh, Colorado. It's called Gutsy Christ Christianity. Oh, really? It's an interesting name of a show. Wow, yeah. And they had it on, well, I've, just between you and me and the Well Post, um, after the editing they did on the show, I would now call them Not So Gutsy Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't edit anything you said, did oh, they? Oh, yes, they did. And, and, um, and, and it was an interesting... And this is a live show, yes, so, I'm, you know, we're stuck a, here. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great lead-in, and, um, and they were talking about, you know, the uh, biblical man. Uh, they wanted to talk about biblical manhood. Mm-hmm. I said, well, there's a heck of a subject to give me to because this is what I work, deal with all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so they said, well, how do you stand on all that? I said, biblically. <laughs> and they said, all right, well, please define. Uh -huh. and, and I said, well, maybe I could say it to you this way. I said, I've been married for 45 years. Uh, the Lord's blessed me with a wonderful woman, mm -hmm. uh, a godly woman, a uh, very intelligent woman, uh, gives me wonderful perspectives and so on and so forth. 
Uh, and I would lay down my wife, my life for my wife. I mean, in a heartbeat, mm -hmm. as I would for my children. Yeah. I would for you and, and for other children. I laid down my without even. I mean, you know how to do it. You're a marine. Yeah, absolutely. And I do it. I said, but I told I told the audience, and I said, I've told my wife I won't wear a dress for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy got very you know red in the face, and he and he asked me to please. Really? Yeah, he asked me to please explain. And I said, well, I said I'm 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 a man. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm a biblical man, mm -hmm. and I, I therefore have the responsibility and the authority of being a man. Um, and I'm not going to give up the authority and become more feminine. In like fashion, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not demanding my wife becomes more masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful that she's a, she's a godly woman, mm -hmm. and uh, we are all equal in the eyes of the Lord. We have different assignments and responsibilities. And I said, what's really gone on in this country is a shift of, of authority because of who's going to be responsible now. Yeah. And that's going on in the church. Absolutely. It's going on everywhere. It, it's, it's, it's pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I know that. And so when I'm talking to men and, they, and they're uh, bemoaning me and all the sad situations they're having in relationships and everything else, I said, well, man up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, that, that was going on with that. And, but let's get back to, to what we're really you know, dealing with here um, and why the Resurrection Party um, because we're not a political party, but w what we're doing is gathering men who have resurrected hearts. Um, I mean, you're, you're Christian men. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not here gathering those that aren't. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm gathering those that are. And, and I'm saying to them, uh, shame on us for being silent. Sh shame on us for pursuing our own prosperity. Right. And destroying the very land we live in and the opportunities for our children and our grandchildren. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's wrong at every single level. And now it's time for us to admit it, um, get aware, become, become knowledgeable of what's going on, mm -hmm. and then stand up and speak the truth. Mm -hmm. They say speak the truth in love, and, and, and that's misunderstood. Uh, absolutely. They mean be gentle. Well, that, that's what they try to tell me. Uh, and as a Marine, I find that a little difficult at times. I mean, I, I do have a gentle side. I've got grandchildren. I love them. Um, well, I tell you, that Marine sergeant that was, uh, you know, when you were in training and beating into you the discipline that you needed so that you can stay alive, and you had, I mean, most people have to hear it in a, this is life and death. Yeah, he didn't whisper in my ear. No. I didn't get hugs or kisses. Didn't beat, didn't beat around the bush. Didn't send me flowers. This is the way it is. Didn't get any cards. You want to live, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And so, um, uh, so it, it's a challenge to men to do that, to gather the men to do it. And um, I thought that it, it should be reasonably, not easy, but it's simple, but not terribly difficult to gather like-minded men that, that, mm -hmm. that could see where the country was going. Mm-hmm and to accept the fact that they have been given a mandate, a command to occupy, protect, and serve, and that they would start coming together and to build up and encourage one another, to help one another, to, to meet that end. Um, not, not so simple. Yeah, well, I want to draw on this other word you mentioned again, okay. is occupy. Mm -hmm. And, and I, what does that mean versus, like, occupy Wall Street, you know, I mean, when you're using the word occupy, how, how do you mean that? Well, the Lord, Lord has placed me here in America. This is where he has me. Right. And I, uh, my responsibility is kind of like driving a chariot. Um, I, I, I got to drive this chariot. Mm -hmm. and I got two horses. Uh, and they're, they're harnessed together. Mm -hmm. and they're working in tandem. Uh, the stronger of the two uh, is advancing the kingdom of God. That horse is, give me the horsepower to do that. Okay. But the other horse is, is to occupy, which is to protect and serve. Mm -hmm. That means I, I can't hide myself behind you know, brick walls and, and sing the hallelujah chorus uh, and then go out and, and, and compete in the world as, uh, as a secret agent instead of a sacred agent right? and to, uh, to play the game the way they do it but try to do it nicely and gently as, as a Christian man. Uh, to occupy means that I have to go out and I have to stand up for what's right, uh, irrespective of consequence. Um, I have a responsibility to occupy to go out and, and to, to do the work that the Lord's given me to do, uh, to provide for my family, mm -hmm. make sure their needs are, are taken care of. Uh, to occupy means to extend uh, my influence to help other men do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it means to, to come against uh, uh, laws that are contrary to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's, and to and to take a stance and 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 other than just to, to moan in, in the shower, you know, and 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 cry and and, and whine in the shower to actually right. get out of the shower, get dressed up, and and as the Lord directs, go out and do something about it. That's what I mean by occupy. Okay. So it's not this uh, we're jealous of Wall Street and we want what they got and we're going to steal from them if we can. And yeah, it's called a pro it's 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 a, it's, it's a perversion of the prosperity message. Mm -hmm. The prosperity message of Christ is that, that I am prosperous. Mm -hmm. I have Jesus Christ. Right. What, what more can you I have, have everything. Yes. So of this prosperity, this wealth I have, this, this, this deep sense of well-being, this peace that I, I've been given him, this gift that I have, he wants me to go out and, and, and to e express that, to tell the truth, to share that, so that other people can, can have what I have mm -hmm. and get out of the nightmare they're in. Um, that's a responsibility. You know, it, it's it's not a um, um, what do they call it in college? You could take electives. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this was not yeah. a, this was right. not an elective. Right. This is mandatory. It's the calling of every man. Every man, and every especially if you're a father. Absolutely. But the fathers need to protect other fathers, and the non fathers need to protect fathers, and grandparents and. Absolutely. Well, you well, I heard an interesting statistic. Each other. Uh, yeah. Eighty-five percent of the men in prison. Um, are fatherless. They came from broken homes. I heard that statistic. I don't right. know how valid it is, yeah. but I, I just no, heard it's, that. No, it's, I mean, I've done some research on that, and that's a legitimate study mm -hmm. uh, that's been done on that. Absolutely. And this is nothing more than, than them getting, getting wow. rid of the responsibility. This, the, the culture allowing them to shed the responsibility of fatherhood. Yeah, and, but that leaves 13% or 15% that were from homes with fathers. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, and I would say a lot of these fathers have been pushed out of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, some, of course, human nature, the neglect is going to be there mm -hmm. and built in, uh, and that has to be overcome. Uh, but men need to be encouraged and strengthened and unite to, to, to be men. Absolutely. So that they can raise their sons in the truth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and, and if you're... If, if the way we've been raised in the church culture that we've been raised in, um, it's this. Um, we go to church. <laughs> uh, we go to a building. Yes. Um, they play music. Right. Uh, sometimes we get a good homily, a good mm -hmm. teaching. Sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. Uh, we, um, we put money in the basket to keep this, this uh, business operation moving and paying all the bills. And we go home. And um, if we've been sufficiently guilted, um, we might go a second time a week mm -hmm. because that's what real Christians do, you know. And then, um, and if they guilt us a little bit more, then we now are obligated to, you know, go to the Word of God every day and pray every day for so many hours and so on and so forth. And if we do all of that, we're good. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's, that's basic fundamental stuff. I mean, uh, as a Christian, it's kind of like putting on your uniform. You know? Well, but there are churches out there that do try to provide this community. Oh, yeah, try absolutely. To, but that community stops within them. Absolutely. I, I've rarely, rarely seen a church that goes out and says, get engaged in the people around you and the policies and the laws around you, um, but we're also going to educate you on, on how to do that. Absolutely. It's, it's uh, hey, go out, do it. God bless you, and you're on your own. You know, <laughs> don't organize. Absolutely. You know, and and don't communicate what's going on out there in here, mm -hmm. you know, because that might upset somebody. Well, the marketing strategy, uh, interesting, and I know we're off point, but it's a good point. No. Um, uh, the marketing strategy of the church general, mm -hmm. there's exceptions, church general, is that... Um, we need to build more beds for the wounded. Mm -hmm. um, and here's how we're going to defeat the enemy. We'll build more beds than he can fill. Okay. <laughs> Which is an interesting battle plan. And, uh, of course, it's totally contrary to the Word of God and what we're supposed to do. Um, the church really is supposed to be, if you want to look at in military terms, it's supposed to be a mass unit, mobile aid surgery hospital mm -hmm. that goes with the Army. Well, what's the Army doing? It's advancing. Mm -hmm. Well, who is supposed to be the point of the spear? The men. Right. 
You don't put the, you know, it's not like what's going on in the Middle East. You don't put the women and children in front of you as cannon fodder. Mm -hmm. No, as Christian men, we, we protect them. We mm -hmm. put them behind us, and we're supposed to go out and do that. And that's a sacred responsibility and a duty that's being shunned, totally disregarded. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm saying, you know, it, everywhere. Yeah. Well, let's get back to the uh, resurrection party here. And um, when this idea came to you, mm -hmm. how, did, how did it progress down the road? I mean, mm -hmm. Occupy, the word came to your mind, Resurrection mm -hmm. Party came to your mind. How, where did it go from there? Well, I, I mean, you know, from an you know, idea the, to actually something happening. Well, you know, here's where, you know, the Lord, you know it's the Lord because, you know, I can't take credit for anything. Mm -hmm. you know, right. I didn't, I didn't have any, you know, sparkling, you know, you know ideas on my own. Um, I was introduced to uh, a couple of men who uh, had done a phenomenal work called the Founder's Bible. Okay, we and, got one here. Yeah, you, you know, and you know, I tell you, if you guys want to get in shape, that up. you, you got to get this thing and just kind of work it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's got a couple thousand pages in this. And uh, when I opened it up, it was given to me as a gift, and I started reading it. Uh, I noticed what had happened is that they had this Christian. Uh, a constitutional historian by the name of David Barton, right, who had spent 25 years and has 100,000 authentic source documents about what the fo founding fathers said and did. Now he's got a, a website, an organization called Wall Builders. Wall Builders, right? You can get right. wallbuilders.com. So, dot dot com. Right. right. And uh, anyway, uh, they got together with him, and they they pulled the very essence of Barton about the Founding Fathers from all of that work. All that resources he yeah. has and original and they, documents. And they integrated it with a New American Standard Bible, and which I love that translation. Mm -hmm. And um, what they did is they put these articles in here that tie to the scriptures that you're seeing. So you can see and actually how it walks out, how biblical principle is integrated with Founders' intent. With, with our Constitution right. and Declaration. And the Declaration. And oh, what, wow. the, what, what the founders' fathers said and how they felt and so on, what there was their heart and so on and so forth. So they did this work, and he gave it to me, and, and um, within a matter of three or four days, I read all the articles. You know? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I've been studying the Bible for you know, decades. Right. But I read the articles and saw how they put it together. I said, sure. well, this is phenomenal. Right. And so I had to beat these guys. Well, the whole separation of powers mm -hmm. is for, straight from the Bible. Absolutely. Representation from the way Israel was structured with their 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. uh, just a tremendous amount. Now, David Barton's been in town quite often. Mm -hmm. He's also on Glenn Beck. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so where, where can a person get this Bible? Well, I mean, is uh, it in the local Bible bookstore? Uh, well, interestingly or not, uh, they, you know, they, they, built, they did the Bible without putting together a marketing plan, which I thought was fascinating. <laughs> okay. um, because these guys were just creative. And, yes. and so I said, well, this, this Bible's got to get out. And uh, one of the things that I'm doing um, is uh, I'm, I'm helping get that out. And, and I do this because I'm a minister. It's pro bono. I'm not on salary. Or I'm right. not commissioned or anything else. Um, but you can go to their, found, their, their website, which is founder, foundersbible.com, okay. and they'll show you exactly how to order one. And, and I, I'm saying this sincerely, and I'll say this to all you folks out there. I believe every Christian family, now, here's important now, you're, you're a Christian American. You're not an American Christian, okay? Big significant difference sure. here. You're, you're a Christian, and you're an American. Superior jurisdiction. Yes, is being, absolutely. Yeah. Every Christian American family should have this Bible. I, mm -hmm. I believe that with all my heart. Mm -hmm. And so I took it to heart, and I got to know these guys. And as I got to know them, we started, up came the website, you know, the Resurrection Party. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we can start communicating there. And now uh, what we're finding um, is that, you know, from don't, don't despise the days of small beginnings. Uh, right. That all of a sudden uh, a certain person has told another person. Um, then we were invited to go out and, to be on not so gut, not so gutsy Christianity, uh, and now uh, we're being invited uh, to go down to uh, Texas uh, to uh, Assemblies of God Church, a nice church with a, a great pastor mm -hmm. um, who is on fire for uh, the Lord. Number one, he's an exceptional pastor in mm -hmm. that sense, and he's but he's also a patriot, mm -hmm. and he wants us to come down and bring the Resurrection Party down there, um, and so we're going to come down and bring this to them and okay. and this to them and, wow. and, 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 and really show them what the Resurrection Party really is all about in America today. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on. Uh, so you got hooked up with them, but then you, you started this, you have this other book called My Heritage. 
Well, it was an interesting. Uh, once again, I, I can't take credit for things. I mean, in fact, you go in there and, and they have my name and the print's so small. I mean, even the glasses, I can't even read it. Um, but I, I don't, you know, it says copyright Mike Terry. Well, please understand the following. <laughs> Here's my responsibility. Um, the statistic was given to me that 90% of the people have never read the Constitution and right. the Declaration of Independence. And I went, wow. Which, which I, I find fascinating because in Minnesota's Constitution, for the Education Department, for the, the section of Minnesota's Constitution about education and the establishment of public education, the purpose of it was to educate the people in order to preserve the Republican form of government. Isn't that amazing? And they don't teach this. They don't even teach this stuff in our law schools. Mm -hmm. In the Minnesota law school, they do not teach the Constitution. Um, equally as appalling, most universities today uh, don't even have American history as a requirement for graduation. Wow. And, and, and the classes they are teaching on American history, I'm coming to find out, is all revisionist history. And they're starting at 1900 moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, and what they're trying to do, of course, is is, is eliminate the foundation uh, and and have a revisionist story, a Darwinian uh, historical uh, record, and uh, to make it all you know vague and and oozy goozy. And they're doing the same thing, of course, legislatively. And we know that, and in, in, in the body of law jurisdiction, they're trying to they make the Constitution uh, Darwinian. Everything's got to be Darwinian. Yeah. You know, and um, and and I thought about that a little bit and and prayed about it, and the Lord said, well. He gave me the scripture about a house built on stone, a rock foundation, and one built on sand. Right. He said, well, if your house is on sand, if you start with the house on sand, you've got to move it. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to get it on, on solid ground. And so uh, the revisionists are saying, well, that's what we're trying to do. No, they're not. And I said, it, 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 and I would buy your argument if we didn't have a government formed on solid rock. Right. And we were formed on solid rock. Right. But what you're saying is you don't like the rock. Right, ex exactly what they're saying. So anyway, so I heard that, and I said, okay, uh, why don't we put together um, a, a work, and uh, and, and I, I, it's a really a, a fine work. Um, I, uh, I agree. Uh, I, my my yes. writing part of it was a foreword, so really, folks, I, I'm not taking credit for this. Okay. What happened was is that we got permission um, from the publishers of the Founder's Bible to take a couple of articles out of the Founder's Bible. Uh, one of them is called uh, Inseparably Linked. Mm -hmm. um, which explains why the Declaration of Independence and why you don't separate it from the Constitution. Uh, and most people don't even understand that. And right, they, they just think the Constitution's it. That's all we go by. Mm -hmm. The Declaration has no legal standing right. with the Constitution. They're separate. Yeah. But that's, that's not the case, and it's important to understand that. Yeah, and you don't hear anybody talking about it. So what, what it really boils down to when, you, when you're talking about uh, the Constitution. Okay, we we have a ch we can use the word, I mean the Declaration of Independence. We can use the word charter. Okay, we can use that word. We can mm -hmm. use the word. Um, we can use the phrase proclamation of purpose. Mm -hmm. This is the purpose. Mm -hmm. And so that was the Declaration of Independence, of course. You know, and we got that put out July fourth, seventeen seventy six. We had the Declaration. Here is our Declaration of Purpose as a nation. Then we fight the war. We win it. Now comes the Constitution. All right, what is a constitution? It, it's, it's, it's due process. Well, or articles of confederacy first. Yeah. And that wasn't quite working out as exactly. the founders wanted it to, that then they came up with the constitution. Exactly. And, but what I'm getting to is that what, what, is, what is this all about? Well, it's right. due process. You know, mm -hmm. How are we conduct, our, how to conduct ourselves as a nation and right. as a people? Right. That came in. So th they're inseparably linked together. So that article from, uh, that these guys did in the Founders Bible was absolutely phenomenal. And so that was put in there. And then we went and put in the whole Declaration of, uh, of, of Independence. And then we put a second article in there called about the Constitution. Is it con it, what is constitutional? Mm -hmm. So you understand why the Constitution, how it works. I mean, simple little things like it, depending on what legislator you're talking to, they talk to you about how complex... Uh, the Constitution is, but it was written and to be read in 20 minutes, and it was taught t to elementary school students. Well, that's what I that I noticed that in this book that it was they, called the, the I believe it was called the Catechism uh, of the Constitution. Right, I think it was. Uh, and but anyway, it was it was standard text for for elementary uh, students in, in grade school, 
and uh, to be read in 20 minutes, readily right. understood by everybody. And yet, because we haven't done it as a people, and now we have people that we're supposed to trust telling us it's too complicated for us and we need constitutional attorneys now right. to interpret it for us, mm -hmm. um, we just push it away. Yes. But it, it's a lie. It's too complicated. Yeah, it's exactly what's going on. Yeah, exactly. It's too complicated. That's the exact words that are used at many churches. It's too complicated. What's used in, it's I used hear in, that over and over. It's too complicated. I'm going, it's no, it's not that complicated. Well, don't you hear it in the House of Representatives and the Senate here in Minnesota, how complicated it is? Yeah. <laughs> and the legions of attorneys that are charging exorbitant fees to interpret something that's readily un understandable by an elementary student? It's amazing. Well, it, but it's been made, to some extent, it's intentionally been made complicated by people. The Constitution is not that complicated. It's the judges that have misinterpreted and reinterpreted the Constitution that have made it more complicated. And matter of fact, judicial law ends up superseding the Constitution, I, uh, which, I, which is a big portion in, uh, in this book. I mean, this is a... Great, great summary. I put it, I put it, but I put a quote in here that's okay. really interesting. Um, actually, I wrote this: uh, "Simplicity, glorious and elegant beyond measure, is of the Lord. Uh -huh. Complexity, on the other hand, is the foolishness of man." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the truth. And so, uh, yeah, I believe, and I'm excited about this work. Uh, we'll, we'll see where the Lord takes it mm -hmm. and how He wants it. But I believe that it should be used as uh, one of the texts in in in, in Christian civics. In, in every in every Christian school, and I think ultimately, I, I believe it should be in every school. Whether we could ever make you know have, have that happen in this country today, I don't know. But I know in Christian schools we should be able to do this. Well, I I, w I would agree. The 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 simple introduction of why the Declaration of Independence, uh, how that establishes the Charter, that that it says here's why we do what we do, mm -hmm. and then the Constitution, which ends up being bylaws. Mm -hmm. Uh, which says, here's how we're going to do exactly. what we do. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty simple explanation here. This is something that should be read through at least once a year by a family. I believe so. Uh, but, uh, but it's going but, back to something, isn't it? Yeah, it's going back to some. Uh, the thing that I thought was said so well in here, so well when it got to the Constitution, was uh, about the philosophies of, of forms of government and how we went from a Christian Judeo, there is truth, the truth is solid, mm -hmm. to an evolutionary exactly. uh, philosophy mm -hmm. of form of government where the judges then went and said, whatever we decide, however we interpret the Constitution is what the Constitution says. Forget the original intent, forget what the founding fathers had, it's it's our idea. And you see, the words you just said are the same words Jesus said. Uh, he was talking to the same group of clowns, right? And and <laughs> and here's what he said to him. He says, you know, your rituals and your traditions have rendered my word null and of no effect. Hmm. That's what's going on in our country today. Abs absolutely, yeah. And so, yeah. you know, what it really did for me, uh, Tim, like I say, you know, you saw a change in me. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm upset, uh, righteously so. I'm 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 raising my hand and said guilty. Mm -hmm. I was silent. I was so heavenly minded. I wasn't any earthly good. Well, and that's the way I was a lot for a lot of my life. And I didn't change much before when we first met. I had a change, and that change took place when the court said to me, Tim, you can't teach your kids the Bible. Isn't that amazing? And then there was no findings of fact, no conclusions of law just thrown into a court order, and I'm going, what just happened? And and I can't tell you how many people I talk to that would say, no, that's not what happened. That didn't happen. I'm going, what? You know, and, and the, but there's a reason they say it, because then they don't have to be responsible. Exactly. Then they don't have to say, oh, yeah, Christians are suffering in other countries and are being persecuted over there. Uh, let's pray. Yeah. I, oh, I, someone's being persecuted here? That means I have to do something. Well, then they still say, let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad you brought that up. Well, I, I didn't have to. Uh, I, I've done enough work. I mean, I've been doing what I've been doing since 1995. 
And, um, and so I've had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of mm -hmm. conversation. I maybe I put too many thousands in there, but for sure <laughs> thousands and thousands. And, um, and knowing I, you, I know you have a lot of conversations. So and I've, and I've talked to saint and sinner. Uh, I've talked to uh, uh, clergy and, uh, and, and, and uh, laymen. Mm -hmm. um, and here's what I, one of the things that I, I really object to. Is that when you know when I'm ter talking to him about and, and bringing a truth to him, and something needs to be acted on, and here's what they say to me: "Well, um, I'll pray for you," and and that means uh, that's a Christian kiss off, by the way. Yeah. Um, th that means leave uh, politely and uh, just leave. Uh -huh. And um, I've experienced that um, uh, more than I can be begin to tell you. And it took me a while to to get used to that. Mm -hmm. um, but to be a man today, a Christian man today. Uh, to uh, be faithful to our king, mm -hmm. to advance the kingdom, um, and to protect, serve, and occupy, mm -hmm. um, it takes manhood. It really does. Yeah, it does, and, and I f fret Good word. a little bit, because Indeed. I know who's sovereign, yeah. uh, that actually with what's happened in Minnesota legislature, this year and last year, that God is in the position now where he has said, you've been given over. The people group of Minnesota, I'm giving you over. Yeah. Okay, you, you, you men here, you Christian men here, have not done your calling and your duty. Mm -hmm. Sure, you tell people about Christ, but you haven't protected. Right. You, you haven't engaged the society that's around you. Right where the spiritual battle is taking place, which is right down there in that legislature. Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual battle. And I can't tell you how many people that go down there and feel oppressed. Oh, amen. And it's a feeling, but it's a reality, too. It's a spiritual battle, and we're not, as Christian men, protecting our kids. And I, I've called out a lot of churches in, the, in this area and said, hey, pastors, you got legislators who are denying your own their own faith in your church and you're not doing anything you're not speaking out about it whether it's senator wigger uh representative lilly or representative fisher you pastors that those men uh and i use that term loosely go to and they're teaching kids to sodomize each other that's what they just voted on we're going to educate our kids on that sodomizing each other is okay. It's a terrible health problem uh, that is coming on, and it's there to destroy families. And it's to dis that's the whole purpose, to create this sexual confusion, therefore destroy the family so that everybody's dependent on the state. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to destroy the socioeconomic unit by which you know, the, the Lord has built his entire family on. And they're out there to destroy it all. Um, I hear another one, which you hear, a um, uh, workplace ministry. Uh, it sounds really good. Okay. Um, uh, translated, uh, let's network and make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> sure. That's all it is. And it, it, it has nothing to do with, and they say by making money, we're advancing the kingdom. No, you're making money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, the, if, you're advan if you're doing what the king wants and you're advancing the kingdom, you know what he does? Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever provision you need to accomplish what you need to accomplish becomes, is made available, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as he wills. Right. But, but it's available. And so when I'm out in the marketplace, I'm out in the marketplace all the time. Um, the last thing that I'm doing is talking about making money. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about how do we advance the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I hear that's that, 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 one cl that one scripture quote. He says, well, the, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Right. <laughs> so let's go out and get it. I said, no, no, no. How do you, how do you get it? How do you get it? They said, I don't know. Uh, that's what I want to find out. I said, no, it's real simple. You, you bring them from the kingdom. You help them come from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Exactly. And you know what they do? They bring all of God's resources with them. Right. Exactly. That's too simple, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Well, we've only got about five minutes left okay. here. Uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, but... What are your intentions with the Resurrection Party? You, I mean, you got some great resources with the Founders Bible, this My Heritage book. Uh, where do you, what is your vision going forward as to what you're trying to accomplish with it? Well, I, you know, you know, I, I like metrics. 
You know, I, I like you know not n not numerology, but I love bi biblical biblical metrics. Okay. And um, and it also ties to the Marine Corps, but I'm not going to get into that right All now. Right. Um, I, I believe that you get there was 120 in the upper room, right? And uh, when they were in one accord and agreement, mm -hmm. um, the Holy Spirit came. Um, they were lit up, and, and they advanced the kingdom mightily. Mm -hmm. and they went out and to spoke the truth, and they did all kinds of tongues. Mm -hmm. okay? So the vision that I have is that uh, every city, um, for sure, uh, maybe some large churches, uh, should, should uh, have the resurrection party in their, in, in their communities and in their churches and gather together men, like men, men of one heart, one intent, mm -hmm. and get them to agree and to advance the kingdom of God and to be actively involved out in their communities to protect and to serve mm -hmm. and to help each other and encourage one another. And, and the Lord will give us all kinds of very exciting you know, uh, ways to do that, as only the Lord can. But I know this, that if I speak, I am a voice. And, and if I add your voice, my voice is louder. And, and if, but if I have 120 men in a company that we're speaking, um, it, it, well, the Holy Spirit, will, all kinds of things can happen. Right. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm going to promote is to get for groups to start forming, you know, their re little resurrection party, mm -hmm. and then the Lord, of course, always unites the clans. Sure, you know, so that all these voices become His bigger voice and bigger voice and bigger voice, and we speak things that be not as though they are. We're going to speak the truth of things, and you know what? I believe we can still change things. Mm -hmm. this, th th there's a lot of people trying to write off this nation. And saying we're done, let's pack our bags. Uh, it's going down. Satan's got it. It's over. Uh, I can't find that in scripture. Uh, <laughs> I just can't. I, he says I when, mean, he, when he comes, he's supposed to find me working. Right. And I'm supposed to be fighting every step every well, day. It's the opposite response they're supposed to have. Exactly. Yeah, we're going down. Fight harder. Yeah. Uh, do they more. Said, but here's what I'm hearing: pack your bags. Yeah, exactly. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Let's ignore this problem that's it, out it, there. Exactly. And somehow, some way, you know, he's going to magically and, and, and mysteriously heal this land. Well, we, we know what it says. He says, if you humble yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was it Chronicles? Right. If you humble yourself, right, and, and, and pr repent and, 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 and pray, you know, and, and I'm going to hear it. And I will change your land. Mm -hmm. But there's certain things you got to do. you got to change. Well, and God uses agents. Exactly. He's Us. always used agents, and exactly. we're the, people are his agents. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so if, we're not, if his agents aren't showing up where the battle's at, uh, the agents have gotten the wrong message. And the enemy wins by default. Exactly. Which is what's going on in this country over and over and over again. The battles are being won not because we're fighting. The, the battles are being fought because we just give it to them by default. Yep. We do nothing. Well, uh, I know that all too much, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. And that's just exactly what we saw uh, this last election cycle and this legislative cycle. Amen. And, we, we, and on the national scale, we have a president who... Uh, is fighting against the Judeo-Christian uh, in every way he can. In every way he can, and supporting. And we talked about this a little bit before the show, but then you, you kind of mentioned in the book that we got these secular humanist evolutionary philosophy in our courts. Mm -hmm. Live the living document that mm -hmm. changes as morality changes. We mm -hmm. can change it, which is not what our constitution's about. Uh, then you got the Judeo-Christian. Um, philosophy of government, and then you also have the Muslim philosophy of government, and those are the three big forces fighting out. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The ones that are the uh, the only ones that are silent are us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. So it's time for us to stand up and tell the truth, and and, and stand up and show and, up and get and gather with other men. Well, and that's and, and, what I'm telling. It just does not take a significant amount of effort. That's the amazing oh thing yeah. in the in the process that was established here. It takes eight days with a total of 24 hours, 24 hours over a two-year period, eight specific days, and you've done a lot for the battle. You've done a Isn't tremendous an amount, and it's just not that much, and it's fun. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, I, I, fun, I carried one box of cigarettes to the front line, and I did my duty. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, well, 
you don't have people going to the front line anymore. No, we you don't. Know. Sadly, we don't. I uh, sent somebody to the front line. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, any any uh, concluding comments you want to make here? Well, about I just want to thank you, uh, Tim, for you know for having me on here. Um, my wife and I were you know talking about it. and She says, "Well, I pray that you know that the that the Lord gives you the right words." And she knows how I can go on and yeah. on and on and on. Um, but my heart is simple. Um, I'm I'm a grandfather. I have uh, three children, and I've got seven grandchildren. And the uh -huh. bottom line on my three my children and seven grandchildren is that um, I've got a job to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm going to do it as the Lord directs. And I'm just calling out every single man who calls himself a Christian, mm -hmm. all right, to get up to speed. Uh, understand what, what, what your heritage really is. Yeah, and the book title is My Heritage, and where can somebody get this? Well, for, for right now, we're just doing what we call um, um, desktop. We've put out 100 copies of it to various places so that I'm trying to get feedback because there's some corrections I want to make. Okay. But if, uh, the ultimately, if they keep checking into well, our website... Go to the, go to the website. The put a notice into the resurrectionparty.org. That, that you want one because you, you can do that. One, mm -hmm. And you'll get one when it's re When we come out. We should have the first printing out. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Or, or email my show. Mm -hmm. I'll pass it on mm -hmm. uh, to you, Mike. But they'll be coming out. I think our first pr our printing we're going to run is probably in 60 days. So, Okay. Because I'll have enough feedback by then. I'm going to close with this quote from George Washington. The power under the Constitution will always be in the people. It is entrusted for certain defined purposes and for a certain limited period to representatives of their own choosing. And whenever it is exercised contrary to their interest or not agreeably to their wishes, their servants can and undoubtedly will be recalled. Well, uh, that was the intent. That was the intent. That was the <laughs> and, intent. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have servants, as many servants of the Constitution in our in our offices that, and but unfortunately that can, but that can change it can change it if needs it to change if we do our jobs and if it doesn't change we no longer have a country amen our this this country and our liberties will be at stake well let me let me can i add one thing before you close real, real quick, quick, quick we got about 10 seconds here no, then I, can, I'll, I'll, I will leave it for another time timothy okay. okay remember if you don't stand up for other people's liberties who's going to stand up for yours and good men don't do nothing God bless. Have a great week. As the firefly brings the light. You said to me 